Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Laurel Park. Today at the races, Naomi Tucker alongside Keith Fusel. We've got quite a big card coming up for this Sunday. Ten races. This was a lot of work this morning. <laughs> I came back <laughs> and I said, all right, I'm going to kind of get back on this card about 6.30, 7 o'clock, grab uh -huh. a cup of coffee and go through everything because i got to look at things a little differently. Doing the line and then I kind of come back. I make some notes, you know, when I'm doing the morning line odds and then say, you know, okay, a little star here. I think I'll like that one to bet. But uh, coming back into this card, this is this is a this is this is some work. This is a challenge today. I agree. Uh, you got a chance to really make some scores on on this card. We talked about the early pick four, middle, and late. I threw I, I threw you a curveball because I usually always do the early. I sent in the middle, and they're like, <laughs> now I look down. Oh, Naomi's got the middle. I, I'll go back to the early. So it's only because the early is kind of your sequence. Yes, so I didn't want to yes. overstep my boundaries no, here. <laughs> no, yesterday we just missed the other higher price. John Betta beat us. We we're yep. sitting there with a five hundred dollar ticket, but uh, the uh, other Mosler. Yes, the other there. Mosler. Yeah. Mosler exactly. And Trombi with a couple wins, consultant on the grass with a big blowout win, but. Uh, Ready to wrap up the week. A little chill in the air, but uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, like I said, 10 races coming your way and a couple of puzzles to solve for sure. And, of course, we are looking ahead at Kentucky Derby and Oaks mm -hmm. weekend. You can uh, place your wagers with us on both those two features. And, of course, the entire card from uh, Churchill Downs Friday and Saturday. Gates open at 10 a.m. It's going to be a good weekend. Come and join us for all the action. And of course, we're also looking ahead at that middle leg of the Triple Crown, the Preakness and the Preakness meet, the spring meet at Pimlico, May 12th. To May 30th, Thursday through Sunday. We we're already saying it yesterday how much you're looking forward uh -huh. to getting back to historical. Look, I think it's an absolutely beautiful race course, like I said, with yeah. some incredible history behind it. It's always a pleasure to be back. There. Absolutely. Looking forward to it there. And then we make a little return to Pimlico, I think, later in the summer, if I'm not mistaken. So you've got two chances to experience Old Hilltop this year. But definitely looking forward to the spring meet. It's short but sweet with lots of Lots of oh. really strong racing action. Yeah, remember we were talking about all the stakes uh, actually on the card. It's quite sumptuous for both back at mm -hmm. season and Preakness yep. Day. But do place your wagers with our preferred wagering partner, of course, with the promo code FAST100. First bet, like I said, the official app of the Maryland Jockey Club. Very easy to use. You get $100 when you sign up. Who doesn't like free money? Yeah, and you're, we're getting to that time of year. We're hedging towards summertime. You know, we're getting there. You might be away at the beach or in the mountains or something. You've got this handy app. Uh, take advantage of it. Take advantage of all the bonuses that are thrown your way. Uh, you never miss out on the action. It's always right there at the palm of your hand, right on the phone. Love Agreed. It. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the current racing conditions. Main track fast and mm -hmm. firm turf, if I can yes. pronounce my words here. Look at the lush green color, though. What the, tur the track is uh, looking gorgeous. Look at those goslings, right? Oh uh, Yes. Yeah, there's, uh, I'm telling you. The start of spring, love it. Uh, that's great. We've got we've got a lot of wildlife. Got the bald eagles around here. I know. So uh, yeah. I did hear from our team that those hatched. I think yesterday, okay. which wow. was quite loving that we're waiting for them. So it's always good to see here. And look, we are surrounded by mm -hmm. lovely forest around here in this. Uh, nook of maryland but let's talk about the racing actually got plenty Kay. to look forward to race number one mile 16 around the two turn here claiming a 10 to 8 thousand numbers of two life and phillies mares at three year old and up mm -hmm. started that early pick four early pick five excuse me we'll get to the early pick four in just a moment uh planning on the same top selection here keith the number seven incontrovertible for trainer ned Alert. She gets down in class after being part of a blistering early pace uh, last yeah. time out. She gets Lasix for the first time today. Does need to come with a better finish. Mm -hmm. But I think it was just a setup that kind of took all the star out of It did. How lucky the winner of that race was a horse of one prior at Laurel with a good number, a big win there. And it's been a productive race. Fourth place finisher came back to Gallup. That was mm -hmm. off the claim for Jamie Ness. She gets the right kind of drop in class here. You know, she hasn't run any kind of glaring numbers, but the flow should be to her liking. I kind of maybe see a lineup race with the four Dauntless Gal going out and shadowing there as the seven incontrovertible. Maybe those two would go as a team. You're looking for a little price to close up. Maybe the two Bless and Honor. Lightfoot Miss is going to be a little lesser. I, I'm looking for a little boost in that exactly using the four and two 
underneath. Yeah, I think Lightfoot Miss is poised to try and collar whoever ends up uh, on the pace. Yep. And she nearly got the victory last time doing uh, just that mm -hmm. for trainer Del Capuano. She did uh, change back to her left lead. I thought she was a little uh -huh. bit tired belatedly, but she kept her momentum going. Exactly. So that's all we're asking for. We'll see how she fares here today. Race number two is the start of that early pick four. I was uh -huh. uh, eagerly anticipating your ticket, <laughs> <Yeah>. clearly. <laughs> well, we went back and we shortened this thing up. I, I could have made a $200 ticket, <laughs> okay, for this early pick. Four. That that's might be a bit much. Well, <laughs> that's how challenging it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could really pay good. I go too deep here with a one and a seven. Camilla Rhodes, your kind of new shooter here on the turf. Ampilo Schema at least is proven. I know she can get the distance. Maybe she wants a little bit more, but there's some flow to set things up. Race three, one, four, and seven. Two-year-olds, so, uh, lots of ways to go in there. Yeah. Naomi, the race four. Uh, three and six. Uh, Lucifer Emilia's three folly going to be your price user in the fourth. Wrap it up. Two deep. Daisy Buchanan and Princess Palmer. 12 to 1, 8 to 1 morning line. What's not the like there? You can work around that because I'm definitely going to use those price plays even in my you know normal races and my exact is keying up on some prices there. I think that's what I like about today's card. I mm -hmm. like some 6, 8, 10, 12 to 1 shots that I'm going to work top and bottom in the exacta with three or four other horses seek that value out. Same there are uh -huh. actually a fair few occasions in races that I went with double digits or yes. more as my top mm -hmm. selection, not because I felt needed to just come up with a price, but no, these fields allowed me to, making me think mm -hmm. there is plenty mm -hmm. of opportunity to see some value uh, coming up uh, like throughout it. the day. Race number two is the first race on the turf today. Uh, rail will be set to 17 feet, uh, uh, one tur what, one, two turn miles at the distance mm -hmm. here. And let's start with Amplio Eskima on the rail for training Milan Milosevic. Yeah. Uh, he, she's coming back after 160 day layoff. This is going to be her first start off the turf. But she's shown a terrific turn of foot, and we're about to see her trying to reel in right some there. winners here, as uh, reel in some runners here as well. And yeah, and just kind of gets caught in behind a wall of horses. Lynch doing the right thing. What we like to see on the turf course, Naomi. Yeah. You don't want to be three, four wide throughout almost in every kind of grass race. Yes, Lynch, boys, they know how to ride this turf course. Mm -hmm. They take some cover. Sometimes you're going to pay the price by doing the right thing and saving ground. She finishes up well here behind the leaders. Going to, you know, get B3 and some change. Indian Nicholas, an okay horse. She's keyed up against Epic Idea. The right kind. Uh, Freshen, this is a little drop, a little relief in company. Turf horse is off of break. Doesn't, it doesn't concern me. I think she makes a run into this pace. I have her my exact, and I agree with you. She's been up against that Maryland Million Ladies turf field where mm. she made up tons of ground yeah. as well. So she seems to have a touch bit more class than some of the others in here. Mm. I tried to go with the number five in a spin, though, for trainer Michael okay. Matt. She broke her maiden quite impressively on the turf at Gulfstream Park. Loop the field, powered home. That's the kind of move we love seeing mm -hmm. on the turf here. I don't believe she really took to the tapita at Gulfstream Park when that race came off the turf, but she still held her own that yeah, day. I, I think she can continue progressing. Definitely. Stamina is there, no doubt. Certainly going to be built up off the synthetic surface at Gulfstream Park. Comes up here and it's the right kind of field. Now, Matt, he's only 10% on his turf runners here. I thought it was going to be a little bit higher. Going to be a shorter price, but again, you've got Forest Boys, Virgo Lynch. You, you know, you're, you've got the right kind of turf riders here in the one and the five. Double key race. Two races back in that race where she broke the maiden. I think the seven, Camellia Road, is like kind of this new shooter that comes uh -huh. in. Only three races under her belt, but she's handled each progression. Was not embarrassed last time out. Certainly divining rides. Uh, early samples, pretty good. 14% so far with the turfers. Bottom side, there is some turf as well. Second down. Agreed. Yeah, is there ran okay in allowance. So I, I, I think she's got a shot here. A half sister to a grass winner mm -hmm. as well. And then she went up against the likes of Click to confirm in that last oh, out and click yeah. to confirm, of course, multiple stakes placed mm -hmm. as well. So uh, Camellia Rod, definitely an intriguing sort for me in here. She's also 10 to 1 morning yes. line. So talking about that value mm -hmm. already won in race number two. Race number three is that two-year-old made in special weight event. Of course, we got the first two-year-old race of the season yesterday. That was for the ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, today is for the boys. Uh, four and a half furlongs the distance here. And I landed on the number six country, Charlie. I can see you have him underneath. He's mm -hmm. by Byron. So far, Byron does 
pretty well with his babies. It hits at 15% yeah. on first asking. Mm -hmm. The farrier barn is very sharp first out of the box. Uh, I guess the pedigree is a little bit more turfy yeah. leaning. Mm -hmm. But look, Arnaldo Boca Chica takes the ride. Those two together, Ferrier and Boca Chica, are pretty tough. Yeah, no doubt. He's he's won his fair share of races, uh, Tony Ferrier, with these uh, two-year-olds. And uh, would not be a surprise. Interesting, we have the same four horses. Maybe not the same exact order, but in, in a race, it's just kind of wide open. Mm -hmm. Riccio drawing the rail down inside. I think maybe he wants a little bit longer when looking at the family. Yeah, you see I concealed agree. identity there. Uh, eight winning sieves, but the Rob factor, Perez factor, you think after a little hiccup yesterday, pre-race, uh, they're ready to go here with Riccio, I'm sure. Uh, Coffee with Chris. Right on Curlin, another one. A smaller sample. 16% though with these two-year-old first-time mm -hmm. starters. Second dam ran well early. Lone sib over for 5. And I like the works in Acosta. You know, he was named on the 70. He goes here. I'm going to follow Acosta. Deadly jockey trainer percentage here. Good little draw outside. Steve's clear of some traffic. There you go. A wide open field. Oh, this is wide yeah. open, but a, f a fun field to mm -hmm. try and handicap. So, yeah, we definitely use uh, the same horses. Uh, perhaps we can get the, the one, two, three home uh, here in good, good fashion. Yeah. Uh, that would be quite wonderful. Let's move on to race number four. Uh, of course, the start of that middle pick four, I decided to do a middle pick four ticket uh, today. Mm -hmm. This is how I play it. I couldn't find a single. I did realize that you had a, a single in your middle pick four yeah. that you then canceled. Right. But yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> I went a little bit deeper. You can see $24 flat. I open up with the six and the seven here. Elusive Amelia as well as Dantastic. I think those two are the ones in that spot. And then race number five, too deep in there. Like I said yesterday, I got away with my too deep in the turf race. I really hope that I'm right at this spot. Five and a half furlongs sprinting on the turf. I went, watch me disappear for trainer Tim Keith. Her two starts today have been very, very decent over this exact yeah. distance. And then circle home for trainer Michael Trombetta, who, of course, uh, had a pretty good day yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. Race six, that's where I spread two, three, five, and seven. That claiming 40. I wanted to use a couple prices in here, including She's Mo Better, including my boss. Uh, I think this could be one of those races that it might blow up. Race number uh -huh. seven, I used the one, eight, the five, and the six. This is a, a race that I actually ended up having a price play in yeah. with Oliferous, the number five for trainer Stephen Cow. I think that this is going to be his second start after a year and five months off. Winning effort on the return, battled for it. I don't think the mal configuration is a problem. He could certainly blow up the toad at 15 mm -hmm. to 1. Uh, $24 flat ticket here. Kind of hoping that the prices uh, will start coming in. So race number four, optional okay. claimant. Starts at allowance, one turn, one mile the distance. We got a, a video, a replay here on the number six, Elusive Amelia. That was her last race to date. She broke well, but they were going for it early, so she ended up dropping a bit further back. It looked like she still had plenty to do, and there was a bit of moisture in the track yeah. by the looks of it, but she was able to kind of slip through on the rail, uh, you can tell she was getting a little bit tired in the latter stage, drifting out, mm -hmm. but it was a good performance nonetheless. Yeah, he was pretty ho hard here around the turn to get that position, mm -hmm. get some momentum going into the stretch, but uh, is able to cut the corner on that left lead there, uh, going to grab command here in mid-stretch and hold sway. Right, fully extended. Now, finally gets back to a fast track. Last time, she's been on a fast track. You're going back to early January, 83 buyer. I don't know if she's going to run an 83 buyer today. But she's got some speed to target. They went and sought out Barbosa, right, to take any kind of weight edge that they could mm -hmm. and a rider that's going to be able to save some ground. Yeah, I, I think elusive Amelia, I think you can count on her to make a run. I know she was a little flat uh, going back in Laurel on that muddy sealed surface. She just may not have liked that at all. It gets back to the fast track today, makes a run. I agree. I, I think she's the one to beat in here. I also use that fantastic. You have her underneath. So yeah. She's making her Laurel Park debut. So kind of, you know, trying to judge how so she fares. She cycles in and out of form mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. So just trying to put my finger on how she'll turn up here. But if she does, I think she's the type that could make a middle move into it and grab some of the exotics. I like that the rider comes down to ride. You like that angle. Um, proven. Yeah, she's run fast enough. She's been off, though. But this Jersey bread's got numbers that certainly stack up. You hate to get beat with her. You know they're trying hard here. They're bringing in this rider, Laprida. So, yeah, I, I think she she certainly fits. It's going to be quick up front. Mm -hmm. Unrequited love loves to go. Hashtag lucky will set her sights uh, somewhere around mid-turn, yeah. I would think. So I'm looking for somebody to kind of roll in. I think Folly gets the right kind of class relief today. Finally, uh, gets back to the right kind of condition. Two other than Likes the before. distance. Would able to kind of, I think, settle without Velo. Another one who's not scared to kind of save some ground and makes a little steady progression. It wouldn't surprise me. A little upset price there with Folly. 
I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I use Lady Fox for that purpose, kind of coming off the pace okay. and see if she can make some move into it for trainer Claudio Gonzalez. Race number five is a maiden claiming 40 to 32,000 event. Phillies a mess at three, four, and five year olds. Oh. Five and a half along that sprinting distance. Let look, let's look at your top selection in here, Princess Palmer. Right. We're going quite far back, uh-huh. uh, Colonial August of 2021. That was her turf debut. I thought it was a very strong debut. She was eagerly rolling uh, to the wire. Uh, mm-hmm. In my books, by far her best effort. Mm-hmm. Hasn't really returned to that. Since no, that. has not, but gets a chance. We're going to be on Lasik's first time on the turf. Tried to get on the turf last time it was taken off. You know, that's fine, though. Give, give that race a little extra boost to the stamina. Good effort here. Just missing the heart light. Two lengths clear of Luna Bell. Uh, we know mm. what she's turned into, but you pay attention. When Hassan Alamri has a turf sprinter, you pay attention. Okay, he doesn't run a lot of horses, but is he a high percentage, high ROI kind of guy on the turf course? Yeah, I'm going to use Princess Palmer absolutely in an eight to one morning line. Might come down a touch, but value is there. First time Lasix. I like the positives here for the eight. Yeah, I went with a bit of an obvious choice here in this field. Watch me disappear mm-hmm. at the number nine. Her two starts today have been very, very promising. And she's hoping to kind of continue in that same vein for Tim Keefe Park. She's had a break, a couple of mm-hmm. decent enough works, and looking to have a, a bit of pace and come running again late, which I anticipate she'll be able to do. Absolutely. I, it's going to be very difficult to leave, leave out of your exactus try. Super, no doubt. She's going to make the run with Forrest Boyce. Uh, you can depend on that. Little price play, Daisy Buchanan, Schumann. We saw him score with a big price the other day on the turf with that sprinter. Name escapes me, right, if I'm not mistaken. I'm I name escapes it. me right yes. now as well. Uh, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Blinkers going on, morning line. The stallion good with turfers 14 for th- or 15%. Mare, look at this, 7 for 11 with three wins, spreading on the grass, topped out at an 86. This one here, protect move up off of that, uh, that disappointing try on the main track. Uh, Suarez stays... This thing is another live long shot, along with Mary's horse, Sullivan Street. It, 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 I think it's got a little shot. You don't have that one in there as well. Real quick, no. street balls. You know they can run on the turf. Uh, listen, boy, okay, there's grass. Half the Jackson Traveler who was stakes placed on the turf. I'm looking for some bombs today. As I, can, as I you like it. See. Look, I <laughs> threw in the one long distance pass, 12 to one. Carol mm-hmm. Cedino aboard here uh, has to jump from the rail, but I think that means she's going to get a bit more of a ground saving trip. Dialed it not too bad with his turf sprint. Nope. hits at about 13%. Mm-hmm. I'm saying not so much a turf lean, but also I'm taking a shot here because that was an off the turf event. Dave wanted to get her on the turf mm-hmm. from the get go. So why not kind of consider this her true debut race? She, she, and she lost all chance and she took a lot. It, you see bump steadied mm-hmm. early, was kind of protected through the stretch. And yep. Just, you know, X that one out, blinkers on Lasix. So this is a filly that took play early and often settled at about seven to one, but was very live. Yeah, so a I'm long time hoping on the board. Yep. that this uh, this might work out mm-hmm. here. And yeah, don't leave out Circle Home for trainer Michael Tron, but nope. there's a lot of turf action among her siblings, and uh, that's why she made her debut on it and now returns to it for the Tron better bun, who, we like I said, had a good day yesterday. So yeah. race five, this is this this race. could be uh, yeah, this could be uh, one of the races that will pay off well uh, throughout the day. We'll take a quick commercial break, but stay with us. Welcome back to Laura Park. We're on race at number six of ten, five and a half furlongs mm-hmm. the distance for that event, claiming four to thirty-two thousand, four straight three-year-old fillies. Look, I'm trying to come up with a, a couple of prices in here. Uh, I feel like this is the kind of field that you uh-huh. could. But let's start with Mama G's wish, who certainly seems to be the one that's going to attract the majority of attention. Mm-hmm. She's Delaware Stakes play. She's shown her level and is consistent in it. This is kind of her group. She gets back to the five and a half furlongs, meaning that I think that the flow is going to be present for her to either make use of a bit for mm-hmm. the back or kind of press just from behind it. A couple of these speedsters come right back to face each other again. She's a big deal. My boss, mm-hmm. uh, 
Yeah, there's going to be flow. You said it. Consistency is the key for Mama's Cheese Wish. Already a four-time winner, three seconds, five-thirds. Uh, really just never disappoints. Try to stretch it a little bit and be on the wire a little too much there. Reach, reached a little too far. But, you know, number is okay. Can get back up to like a 60, lower 60. I think that can win it. Uh, Lady Zeta is another one. I think a little bit of relief here off the pace. Yeah. But I like some of your price plays in here, no doubt. Yeah, no, I went with She's Mo Better 10 to 1 morning line. Yeah. Uh, she makes her three-year-old debut. Lasix uh, applied here as well. Very sharp outfit in a Cahill Lynch barn. Mm -hmm. She's been prepping well at Fair Hill, it seems. And I like that George. Georgie Ruiz takes the ride. I think he's going to give her a prime spot in this. You, listen, ran fast enough at two. Now, granted, that was a sloppy sealed surface. I, I still think these Uncle Lenny's are all running, not for love. This horse should handle a fast track. Lasix comes back on fresh. And maybe they were just waiting for this. You know, mm -hmm. give her some time to grow up. You project a little improvement. Okay, five, six points in the buyers. Right in the mix with everybody else. This is a pretty evenly matched field. Um, it's 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 trip. It's going to be huge. There's going to be horses really gunning early for the lead. It's mm -hmm. going to be some traffic, I'm sure, leaving the three eighths to the quarter pole, and uh, hopefully, Mama's G's wish escapes unscathed. So yeah, five seven two one. Uh, sweet Gracie video, right? We have mm -hmm. a video of this yeah. one. I think this is the right like kind of drop back down in class. This horse had a brutal oh, trip absolutely. last time out. Yeah, I was looking at that break. Couldn't have been much worse. You can see she kind of came up, got ranked, lost about three, four lengths immediately mm -hmm. right there. Now over five and a half furlongs, game's kind of over at that point. But she comes back with a st strong premature move though. Kind yeah. of reined up, then flattened completely. But this was eye-catching. I just think it was a bit too <laughs> early. Yeah, yeah, and it happens sometimes, you know. Uh, you know, bug rider, younger riders, he's getting, getting plenty of experience, but sometimes horses get a little anxious, and they mm -hmm. say, you know what, let's go ahead and go. And I don't completely blame him with the attack, because on the, on the 10th, that was a pretty good wide day for the most part, Naomi. So he tried, tried to take that edge with Sweet Gracie, just didn't quite pan out. She's got to behave better out of the gate, though. She can't be mm -hmm. ranked throwing her head and spying this field that much. Um, this is the right little drop. Price user. I think she's going to be I anywhere agree. 6, 10, 12 to 1. I agree. Yep. If you're you're playing sort of your exotic horizontal wagers, you want to be going deep in this race. I mm -hmm. think that uh, they're a very evenly matched group in here. So yes. I ended up not using Sweet Gracie in my top four just for the fact if she does the same thing, these uh, other ladies yeah. are going to wave her they're goodbye. Gonna, yes. And, and it's, it's kind of going to be all over. But look, I don't mind her at all. I had her on and off my ticket okay. myself as well for Trainer Ferris Allen. So race number seven is a one turn, one mile event here. It's Marilyn Brett, Marilyn Sired allowance. Uh, we'll start with your top selection in Cobble Road. We can uh, look yeah. back at his last race. He's coming in here on quite the streak, three win streak. He had an outside draw that day, went to the front, took them all the way, but then Hard Sting was giving him a bit of a scare. But dead game. And, and you're seeing that this horse will dig in. When he meets the challenge, he's, no, 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 no. I'm going to battle you every step of the way. Actually look like he might have lost the lead there for a second. Comes back. I, I tell you, um, this guy's going great guns right now. Third off of a layoff. And uh, yeah, it parks a little tricky sometimes. That track's been heavy. Internal fractions you're trying to judge. I, I think he is the speed of the speed here. And he comes in off of a good number. Comparatively accelerated beetle. Where's Ruffy, who I like? Same kind of angle as running mm -hmm. up there at a mile. Lesser figs. I, I think this horse might be a little bit better than Ruffy. Let's go to the front, and, and if you challenge him, let's see if he can dig back in again for the third time. Yeah, I second your opinion with he has the pace angle on paper. He looks the fastest of all of them, being mm -hmm. able to go to the front. He loves doing that and has the angle in terms of his speed figures as well, that yeah. he has consistently run faster than some of the others. Mm -hmm. However, I'm trying to, to best him here. Okay. I've got a bit of a price on Eliferous, mm -hmm. a 15 to 1 morning line. Like I said, I'm trying to come up with some prices here today. I thought it was a fun day <laughs> yeah. for it. Stephen Gill trains. S uh, first start after a year and almost five months off, made it a win at Maiden Special Weight, battle for it down the lane. The way that he fought down to the wire mm -hmm. makes me think the mile configuration is not going to be a problem. And we always like that second after the break angle, getting that fitness back. It was quite a turnaround performance, to, mm -hmm. to be honest. Clearly, he needed the break. Uh, he must have had some hiccups there. It was a lengthy one. Yeah. Now a five-year-old. Why not? That kind of figure holds up. I was looking at the time from U.S. figures. Yeah, Your yeah. horse is still faster uh -huh. than Eliferous is, but on possible improvement, I, I think he's interesting. Yeah, he is. He's interesting. There's a lot of happy Pimlico uh, faces, some familiar faces behind the uh, the winner's circle when this horse scored at 55 to 1. So a lot of pockets were lined, <laughs> it looks like, when Eliferous pulled that big, big upset. you got to love it. Hey, man. 
Well, let's talk quickly about the number 1A as well. Accelerator for trainer Hugh McMahon. Uh, uh, uncoupled entry now. The other one scratch. Did get a nice run coming in off the layoff. His closest speed got to settle before coming in around yeah. down the lane. Much the best that day. Of course, classy Federico Tessio first past the post. Uh -huh. Did get DQ'd. So you definitely don't want to be sitting on, on him either. No, pretty confidently handled too. Had the leader measured and was able to kind of go on by and go clear. Yeah, I think should move up a little bit off of that next effort. We move on uh, to race number eight in here, which is back on the turf. One mile the distance, made in claiming 40, yeah. 32, 1,000, 4, 3, 4, and 5-year-olds. Let's start with your top selection in here, Grand mm -hmm. Manor. I use him underneath as well. He made his debut two weeks ago and was working very, very forwardly yes. for it. Ended up not seeing out the trip, the mile on the main track. Sire doesn't really indicate turf in my books, Ironicus, but the dam ran two seconds yeah. on the grass. And if you're looking at the Tim Keefe barn, I do think they tend to do a, a bit better with their second time studs. Yes, Ironicus was a killer. He was one of my favorite horses on the turf. And, and, and you know, when you're looking at the stats, they don't really stack up, right? No. It's offspring of only about five or six percent. Yeah. But uh, th this horse got pounded. Naomi at the windows. You don't see Tim Keefe horses. I know it was a short field. Go off the five to two first out. So word must have been out on Grand Manor. I like the long comment uh, Bill put in here. Kept wide throughout. I like that. You know what? Right. Give me an indication. Stamina build up here, shooting back, transitioning back to what I think is going to be the, the better surface for this guy. Um, I think he's going to be forward. And this Dawkins pounce, maybe right to the front. We shall see uh, w with Gomez, Ripkins, another one. You've got Ripkin on top. I'll let you talk yeah. about him because I, I do like this horse. Uh, Sal Sinatra. I have How yeah, about it? For, I, I for know. Sal and Damon Dilla DeVico. I remember that he took a bit of time to get going with this one. I, uh -huh. I thought he showed some promise, though, but a couple of uh, perhaps a bit of a clunker. Mm -hmm. Now gets back uh, on the turf again. I think that's kind of what they've been waiting for. So yeah. he put a line through that last mm -hmm. race. It was also against a, a good field. The two first out place, places came back to win again after that. was up against High Point when he made his seasonal return on the 8th of January of this year. That horse kind of held his form next time out uh -huh. as well so I feel like he's been up against the right kind and this is the spot that I can actually get the yeah. job done I think I think you can depend on Ripken today you know uh, he's he's obviously his figs stack up on the turf he's got a little time more to mature mm -hmm. and a lot of issues yeah. in, in those early turf races but you're right he's up against the right kind he's going to make that run I think from mid-pack you see Prince Pear in the running there's a horse that's run well in allowance or stepping up in class so I, I, I like Ripken here one of the two I'm going to key on these two in my exact is in, in my multi races moving forward throughout yeah the how about the Graham Moshe run though twist and twirl by twirling yeah. granny now a gelding first time Lasix first start as a three-year-old for of course a barn that does take their time developing yeah. their runners tried to go on the turf it was an off the turf event look has been sort of slowly hoovering towards a bit of improvement right. perhaps now being an, an older runner three-year-old might help yeah how about the stat though first turf for motion staggering five percent from a 64 horse sample you don't see that and a horse that's going to be eight to five nine to five when it's all said and done i've got to look elsewhere for value we'll use the horse underneath um and it certainly should probably go right up to the front there's there, there's turf in the family second dam was really good media access was uh, multiple stakes placed on the turf. How uh, about the McLean Hendricks runner, Temple Al Liam? Mm -hmm. I had him on and off my tech and in the end and did not use him, but did show good speed when going on the turf for the first time. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, we showed that video yesterday. Consultant came out yeah. of there to gallop. Mm -hmm. Lasix, some positional speed. Another one, given some time. Barn change, might see some improvement. Uh, yeah, I don't want this horse kind of getting out there and getting brave and not having him in there in the exact. No, race number mm -hmm. nine, first level optional claimer for Phillies. Three-year-old six furlongs, the sprinting distance uh, in here. And uh, look, this is a, a fun little field lined up. Uh, I think there's a couple of <laughs> yeah. live runners uh -huh. in here. You land on a horse that I ended up not using. Half is enough for trainer Michael Trombetta, who did make her debut race a win. They mm -hmm. took a little bit of time. She now returns as a, a three-year-old. But look... I wouldn't put it past the Trombetta Bond to have continued to her development and right. that she actually jumps up a couple of points in here. Now, she does have to jump up because I was looking at what she ran. Mm -hmm. but very, very much possible on her second stop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, $150,000 purchase, bet down up there in a shorter field, walked, just walked out of the gate. And, Mom, if I watched that video again this morning, I wish we should have got, got it on the show. Maybe if we can get it later, we can we, we can show this video. Maybe if we've got some time. But really, it made an easy, you know, kind 
kind of an eye-catching move up, up to the pace setters. Did it well within herself and just rolled home. Steady encouragement, you know, kind of a ridden out winner. Mm -hmm. But again, projecting improvement, kind of like that uh, Lynch horse you talked about early in the card. There's yeah. speed here, a little bit of better, better break. I know she doesn't need the lead, and she's going to bring a finish. This horse freshened back. Uh, I, I think I it's like going it. to be tough. I'm hoping slips through the cracks at an okay price. I, I like your pick. Mm -hmm. You definitely took me on to her as well. Of course, Carol Cedino takes the ride. I land on the number seven, Bandits, Warrior for trainer Jerry Robb. Look, she, she's the one to beat yeah. here. Uh -huh. She tried to take the lead, but ended up letting Noble Bid take her take it over last time out. She dropped back, and it looked like she was kind of gas, but she came back with a second win t to uh, snatch third there. I think here... It looks like she might just get an easier front-running yeah. spot, uh -huh. and that could make all the difference. Yeah, I think she's going to be on the engine with a good break on or just off the lead prompting. She was caught inside on the 10th of April. That's why you said mm. she looked like she was working hard. Horses just inside were struggling a little bit. Once yeah. she got back outside, made another kind of another move at it. I like when horses make two moves in races. There's Bandits Warrior. Yeah, Jerry Rob, forget about it. It's got a shot. Dawn Land's got a shot. This Misty Mauve is good here. I think. Yeah. I mean, she Great. ran very well in debut. Had a not a, not an easy trip last time. What was my comment there? The between horses, yeah, caught between almost she, every step of the way. Never mm -hmm. could get clear and get comfortable. But I like the effort to the wire. There's click to confirm. Yeah, no, I, wide open this race. is this is a wide open mm -hmm. affair as well. Nightcap uh, of today's card is race number ten, made in sixteen to twelve and a half thousand. Four fillies, MS, three, four, and five year old, six furlongs sprinting distance uh, here mm -hmm. as well. And Keitha, you come up with a please marry me for yeah. Rudy Sanchez Solomon, who tried to go with them on her first start. Looked like she was part of it. Looked like she was traveling and she had something. And then belatedly, yeah. just kind of packed it up, That's really. It. And there's March 18th. Um, again, I'm just going to try to play these biases. We've got a barn change. First off the claim, yeah. First off the claim, uh, off the dead rail. Uh, another one with speed to get position, I think, brings a better finish today, no doubt about it. Words I will probably never utter again. Please marry me. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I got yeah, lucky first yeah. time. I'm not yeah, going yeah, to. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah that's no, it. I, I agree with that one. I think I think that's uh, something that you only want to say once, really, yes. in your life, right? Yes. And yep. then uh, hopefully it will continue. Willard to would kill me upstairs if he ever he said, come on, Keith, what are you doing? <laughs> no. All right. The number four, watch your tone uh, mm -hmm. for Marilyn McMullen uh, is my top selection in here. Yeah. That last race, I, I, I was watching that back, just got very, very keen, ended up not being able to do anything uh -huh. on the day. But I think coming back here, Look, uh, this should at least be a bit more of a better performance. A lighter debut run. Oh. I know the figure didn't come back super strong, mm -mm. but she showed that she wanted to be a race, or she showed that she was part of it here. Now we get a, a senior rider on board in yeah. George A. Ruiz. I think that could help. Yeah, you might see some kind of equipment tweak and everything like that. And the McMullen barn is sneaky good off the clang. We've seen Moody Woman and horses like that move up. I, I, you, you, they'll have this one, I, I would think, a little bit straighter straighter course today to make make her presence known. And certainly icy reply from the inside. I, I, much improved effort last time. A top, top number by far. Rockin' Hippie Chick came out of there to run really mm -hmm. big next time out. How about Candy Corner? You use her in your exact. She's a five-year-old. The reason I use her underneath is she can post a figure that's good enough to, to maybe get second or third, but she's a bit more exposed than some of the others in here that we're kind of taking chances on. You're right. She's going to get played jumping off the number. You look just mm -hmm. look at the buyer. People like the flock yeah. to those. Uh, going to be a shorter price. Island fellows come back to run well. So you use that. And, you know, was kind of caught in behind horses. You know, might have had the momentum stalled a little bit and then just kind of flat and late when trying to run into those runners that had something left through the stretch. So I, I, I think as a user underneath, yep. How about the other Rudy Sanchez Solomon runner in here on the rail? Icy reply. She's certainly going to try and take them yeah. uh, as far as she can. Yeah, that was it. Talked about. That was a good effort last time out. I, I, I thought rock, um, mm -hmm. rocking hippie, ch hippie chick, yeah, uh, the, way, the way that one came back. Yeah, user. Yep. Yeah, no, uh, this would be a fun field lining up in race 10 as well, but just plenty of opportunities uh, for you to make some money this Sunday with us. So, yeah, if you are uh, playing from home or joining us here on a track and tied on, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, tune in today, Rotman, with some of the scratches and uh, changes. You got a good betting card. Good luck.